Hello everyone, my name is Nachiketa and welcome back to another video. So as a lot of you might know, I've been working as a computer vision engineer at a startup called as Averos for the past 6 months. And the reason I'm making this video is because as the number of AI companies in the past one year has exponentially risen, most of the companies today are trying to integrate their products with AI and a lot of freshers and a lot of people are trying to break into the field of AI themselves because of the perks that it has. It offers great pay and compensation and you get to work on a lot of exciting projects and products, right? So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my top three learnings that I've learned working at a startup and these learnings are going to help you break into this field as well as understand what happens in the back end of an AI startup. So the number one learning that I learned immediately as I got to work was that I understood why it was difficult for me to get a job in the first place. Now in my third year of college, I had applied for the role of AI interns at a lot of companies and I had got rejected outright from most of the companies that I applied to. And at that point, it really didn't make much sense to me because from my perspective, I had been working and studying this field for around a year. I had a very good understanding of the mathematics of machine learning and AI and I'd done a decent amount of projects. So when I got rejected, the reason was not obvious for me, but it is obvious for me now why I got rejected then and why a lot of freshers find it hard to break into this field. And the reason behind that is the difference between theoretical and practical AI. Now, when you're working on an AI product in an AI company, your main focus is gonna be using some sort of data pre-processing it, building AI models around it and scaling it into production as fast as possible. You have to be aware about the complete life cycle of an ML product, which involves pre-processing the data, building models around it, uh, integrating that with UI, converting it into APIs that different services can call, containerizing your application and scaling it up for multiple users. And all of this is something that you'll never really be able to do well as a fresher not because it's technically difficult, but because you never have a need to do that in the first place. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm building a TensorFlow classification model that can differentiate between a cat and a dog, right? So what I'll do, I'll take some data sets available on the internet, build some ML model and make predictions and that's it. However, if you're doing it on a company, the same project is going to be very different. First of all, you're going to be working on a much bigger database. You'll probably have to acquire it, annotate the data, pre-process it, build models around it. But after building the model, most of the time the process is over for us. But that's where the real process starts for companies because once an AI model is ready, you have to integrate that with different services, right? Because customers are not going to code and uh, run predictions using your model. So scaling it up and containerizing your application, running your models on CPU versus GPU, being aware of the complete software architecture is something which is required. So what I suggest in a lot of videos is having knowledge of certain parts of this life cycle is going to be really helpful. For example, let's say you build an AI model for predicting a cat or a dog. Take that one step forward and try to integrate that with a web application using frameworks like Flask and Django. And I myself have made a lot of videos regarding that. So that is going to give you a good understanding of integrating your model with a UI. Next step, try to take it forward by hosting your model onto a cloud platform. Uh, let's say you use Azure or GCP or Amazon AWS and try to containerize the application as well. If, even if you're not able to build an expertise, but you are aware of these processes and have done certain amount of work in that, that will exponentially increase your chances of getting hired by a company that's building this product. Because if it's a role for a fresher, you will not be required to have an expertise, but you will definitely be required to have an understanding of all of this. My second learning of working at a AI startup is that it's very important to have a domain expertise. So I'm specifically working uh, as a computer vision engineer. Now the field of AI is very broad. You, are, you can have a computer vision engineer, a natural language processing engineer, a machine learning engineer, a data scientist. All of these are somehow interlinked with AI, but these are very different. So a good computer vision engineer might not be a very good natural language processing engineer, right? So if you're trying to break into this field, it's very important to have an expertise in at least one of them. And even in that, you can have multiple domains. For example, let's say you want to get into AI. 
you have to decide what exactly you want to get into in AI so that you're able to work specifically on that. Are you interested in natural language processing? Then you work on projects related to that. Or if you're more interested in computer vision, then you work on projects related to that. So if I'm a computer vision engineer, I do not necessarily have any edge for the role of a natural language processing engineer. So if a fresher is applying for the role of a natural language processing engineer, and even I'm applying for the same, I only might have the extra edge of, let's say, having a better hand at programming and being aware of the life cycle of an AI product. But if that fresher has done, let's say, 10, 20 projects in the field of natural language processing and I have not done any, he will de definitely have an advantage over me for that particular role. So it's important to decide or have a good understanding in one particular field. And even inside a field, let's say you select computer vision, you can have multiple domains inside of that. Let's say you're working on pro projects related to medical imaging, or you're working on projects related to the uh, retail industry or automobile industry. It's very important to work on specific domains as well. Let's say I've done five to six projects only on medical imaging. Right? That will make me have a very good understanding of this field of what kind of images are good for a model, what all problems does a particular model face in these kind of problems. And that will exponentially increase my chances of getting hired by a company that's working in this domain. Let's say there's any medical AI startup and have an expertise in this, I'll definitely have a very big edge or advantage of all the other people applying who are freshers at least. Right? So it's very important you identify fields and try to build an expertise in any of the domains inside of it. The third lesson I've learned, which might be true for most startups is it's very important to upscale fiercely. This is very important, especially for AI, because this is a very dynamic field and it's constantly changing, which means the tools that I'm using now would be very different from the tools that I was using six months or one year ago, right? The AI models are constantly evolving. Let's say I'm working on Yolo V3. Um, there might be Yolo V10, V12 in a year. And I, and I should have an understanding of that also. New tools and softwares are constantly emerging, which you should be aware of, right? For example, tools like MLflow, or if you're using Docker and Kubernetes, a new solution for containerizing applications might come up. And it's very important you're constantly learning every single day. So it's very important you're learning constantly and upskilling and you're not stagnant with the same skills. So this is gonna be only possible if you really enjoy this field or you're really interested in learning this. So that is also something that you have to keep in mind when you're breaking into this field. So these were the top three lessons that I've learned. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos of what goes in the back end of an AI startup and how you can truly master this field and be able to break into it as a fresher as well. So if there's anything in specific that you want to see, do leave that in the comments and I'll see you again in the next video.